And there we go, we got an XSS. And just like that, we found a vulnerability, XSS vulnerability that exists within a website. So in this video, I'll show you how AI can be used by hackers to find vulnerabilities and how they can exploit them. All right, so here's the first website that I'll be testing on. It supports Swigger Web Application Lab. Um, if you haven't heard of Port Swigger before, then these labs are basically websites that allow you to test your hacking skills and learn web application hacking on. So check them out, they are a great resource for learning. And I will be using Grok AI and ChatGBT for this video. By the way, feel free to use other AI models for this. And I have tested so many uh, models, but these two are the best so far. I'm only using this lab as an example because again, this video is for educational purposes only. But regardless, these techniques can be used by hackers to find vulnerabilities within real websites. But please keep in mind that YouTube has its limits and I cannot show you everything in here. That's why if you want to learn unfiltered content, please check out my Patreon page in which I upload videos that cannot be uploaded on YouTube. All right, so moving on, as you can see, it's a blog website. It has a search function and a number of posts. Let's start with the search function here and I will test the input. Okay, we can see the input that we just searched for in here. This is interesting because sometimes if we give it the JavaScript code as in the search function, it will actually render it in the web page itself. I will actually right click and inspect that search box. And since we will be using AI to help us determine any vulnerabilities that exist within this HTML page, then let's copy the whole HTML section that's responsible for this search function. I'll do copy and inner HTML. And I'll come here to Grok. Keep in mind when dealing with AI models, try to give them as much information as possible about this web application. So it's a good idea to give it the HTTP request and the response so we have an accurate answer back. Actually, let's do that. So I'll go to Burp Suite and this is where we can capture the HTTP response and the request. So let me copy the lab URL, paste the URL in here, make sure the intercept is turned on and hit on OK. And here we can see the HTTP request with the search that we tried, which is 3WTE. I will actually right click this and send it to repeater because we want to see the response as well. So I'll go to repeater tab and here we can see the request that we sent to the repeater. All we have to do now is to send the request by clicking on send and here we have the response. So I'll copy both the HTTP request and the response. I'll start with the request and I will do response for that. Come back here. Now you notice that sometimes it mentions DOM XSS, which is a hint that AI can use. We can actually remove these hints and make it a bit harder for AI to, to actually find the vulnerability instead of just looking at the hints. You don't have to do that, but just in case you want to make it more challenging for Grok or the AI model that you are using. Okay, now for the prompt, I will tell it that you are a cybersecurity expert analyzing a lab environment website. It's designed to be vulnerable and I want your help in finding vulnerabilities. I will provide the HTML source code, request and response, find the vulnerabilities and give me the URL to test them. Let's hit on enter and see what Grok has to offer. Currently thinking, so let's give it some time to think. And okay, so suggesting that there is a reflected XSS in the search parameter. And here is the test URL with the payload. I will actually just copy the uh, URL and come back here and I'll paste that. And if I hit enter, well, nothing happens. We can see the payload is so basic that it didn't even try to use advanced payloads. So this is to show you how important it is to describe what you want to the model itself. So in this case, we can say we want more advanced XSS payloads that I want to test on. Or in this case, since we are doing an example, I will actually copy paste the same prompt that we gave Grok and I will paste it to ChatGPT just to show you how different models work. I'll hit on enter. We got the URL. I will copy paste it again. Same thing, didn't work. 
And finally, I'll use DeepSeek and see how it reacts. All right, and we can see DeepSeek gave us multiple payloads to test. As you can see, the basic XSS test, which we actually tested this uh, the first time. It's the same thing. And we have an alternative payload. And we can actually just copy this payload and try it on the website. And there we go, we got an XSS. And just like that, we found a vulnerability, XSS vulnerability that exists within a website. So as you have seen, we used multiple AI models. The last one worked, which is DeepSeek, because it gave us multiple options, even though we didn't say to give us multiple options, it just did. The other two, ChatGPT and Grok, did not. Without diving deeper on how LLMs work, you can simply tell AI what you want, and it will try to give you that based on the prompt that you give it. So let's move on to the next website. So similar to what we saw before, this is a blog website. It has multiple posts and we have a search function. I will actually search something like test and we can see that it uses a similar mechanism. And again, I'll do inspect. I will copy paste this. Let's start with ChatGPT this time. And I will give it the request and the response, just like we did with the other one. I will actually copy the same prompt that I used. Okay, so we can see the findings. It thinks that it found a reflected DOM JavaScript XSS. And here's the explanation for that. You can pause the video here if you want to read the description. But in this case, I will just copy the actual code since we have the URL in here. Go to Firefox paste the URL, and just like that, we found another XSS from the first try, actually, and this time using ChatGPT. Since we already know the payload, we can actually reference back to it, and we have two backward slashes, which means that it will use that to escape the HTML filtering that the website is using. So ChatGPT and DeepSeek got it. Let's see what Grok got. Let's see what Grok found, and it's still thinking for some reason, so let's give it some time. So again, this is very generic. We didn't give it anything in specific to test on. All right, it's finally finished. Let's see what it found. Okay, so here's the summary again, or the description of the possible reflected XSS that it found. Uh, feel free to pause the video again. So this is the alert, this is the payload, and I don't believe this works because we already seen how the payload works. So let's actually test this one. Uh, nope, we did not We did not see any alert box. So that means it did not work. Let's see what else it found. Let's see if it has any additional payloads. And nope, it doesn't have anything. Unfortunately, it looks like Grok failed this time. So again, this is very generic. Um, I'm not telling it anything in specific to look at, even though we can do that. And you should try to do that in the future as well. So AI can be used in different ways. For now, we're just looking at chatbots. Keep in mind that you can always customize LLMs or AI models by downloading them and hosting them internally, or you can actually host them externally as well on the cloud. The main point here is you can actually tweak them in a way to make them look and interact as a bug hunter or a pen tester, which is significant. In the next videos, I'll go deep into using LLMs to automate bug hunting tasks, which basically turns AI into an automated bug hunter. If that's something you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments. So I hope you have learned something useful from this video. As always, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.